back to mash up the show that showcases Melbourne. I'm Ariel Simone. And I'm Scott Winfield. And welcome to another episode. We've got a mm -hmm. jam-packed show for you today. We sure do. We're going to be looking at... Karaokeing? Busking? Busking karaoke? All sorts of busking today. Yeah. And um, the Reach Foundation. And the marvellous work that they do. a really important one. But, but first... We're going to be looking at street art. Now... Graffiti? Yes. Street art? Well, you actually strike me as a little bit of a vandal. That's not a very nice thing to say. Is there any chance that you might be or have been a vandal at any point in your life? Um, I felt like that got <laughs> nipped in the bud pretty quick. I mean, I, I was did. six, seven, madly in love with a I boy. Picked it. I picked it. And, I you know, the character. toilet wall dedicated a montage to many true loves in the year. And, and I thought that mm -hmm. I would, you know, try Can my hand a little bit of street art. Yes. I heart Kyle. Um, Actually, I think I put my name in it, which um, is why I probably got busted. Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> and what happened to you? Um, I got told off, and I've never done it since. See, we're actually about to see celebrated street artists yes. now. So let's take a look. Opposite the entrance to the atrium at Federation Square is a blue stone cobbled laneway called Hossier Lane. The graffiti that has appeared there makes it a celebrated landmark. In fact, the artwork on the walls near number one Hossier Lane and near Misty Place at numbers three to five have been approved by the City of Melbourne as registered street artwork. The area was formerly occupied by the rag trade with many clothes manufacturers having warehouses in the area. But now the lane is known for its quirky bars and stenciled artworks that adorn the brick walls. Hugely talented artists in oh, the city. Seriously. So much better than my little escapades as a six year old. <laughs> Don't be hard on yourself. I'm sure it was very good. But those guys are <laughs> absolutely, absolutely incredibly talented. I know. I've also, what I love about it as well is it's not just paint. I know that some mm. of them, they stick on, like, I know I can remember one in particular a couple of years ago, they stuck playing cards to the wall as well, okay. which is really awesome. Sure. So, yeah, art in its many diverse. forms. Yeah, yeah exactly. Absolutely. Did you have a favourite out of the ones that we just saw? Because uh, yeah. I did have a little bit of a fanboy moment back in my know. childhood for the Ninja Turtles. I know you did. You squealed like a little girl. I may have. I <laughs> may have, yeah. Maybe a bit harsh. No, I really love the puppet one with the, the face that was half split. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, it was kind of gruesome on one side. That was really I awesome. I think always if you're ever bringing someone to Melbourne, if you ever you know have to give someone a little bit of a tour, Grab a coffee exactly. through the streets. It's so looking much at the street art. funkier than going to an art gallery, which can be a bit stiff and, and mm. not natural. Very I distinct. We're very yeah. lucky here in Melbourne. There's inc incredibly talented people oh, here. Oh, there is all around Melbourne, mm -hmm. and and especially I found on Burke Street. Yes, it would seem we have an incredible <laughs> amount of talented people, not only doing street art but buskers mm -hmm. as well. And we're Busk. about to take a look at some of them right now. Busking is the sound of the city. Burke Street, at the heart of the Melbourne CBD, well known as an entertainment hub, best known as the location of the Burke Street Mall. It is also one of the favourite places for many buskers around Australia. Uh, hi, my name is Gareth Viansko, uh, from Wales originally. I'm a busker in Melbourne and also attending university here. So yeah, pretty much my life is music, yeah, every single day. <laughs> it's the random people that I tend to enjoy because you get particular people, you're not quite sure if you've gotten through to them, then it hits the end of the set and they always come over and have a chat with you and those are the ones that, yeah, they mean the most, I'd say. Store, apparently, and he came right up to my face, lifted his sunnies and there was tears coming down his face and he's like, you're actually making me cry through my music. So if I can get through to a person like that, then I'm doing my job right. I find 
the most viable way for me to actually attend university is to be doing music on the streets or like be a performance or busking. The kids are my favourite because they're the most purest form of art appreciation, I would say. Like, they don't really understand what music properly is, but they know if they like it or they don't. And when you can find a kid dancing in front of you, that's when you know you've got through, basically. Probably starting from the start. So Melbourne City Council, they help you out. Uh, it's every two weeks, you can get a permit. Once you've worked for six months on the streets, you can then apply to actually work on Burke Street. We have to go through an interview first. And if they deem you worthy, you get on this street. And this is the best for actual showcasing, viability. There's so many tourists, so many regulars that come, especially the weekends as well. But yeah, just give it a go. My name's Joseph, that's my brother Jan. We're from um, Germany and um, yeah, our band's called Amsterdam. We are a big family yeah. of the musicians. We all like each other. It's not like we hate each other. Every day something else happens when you pass. It's really, you can never tell. People steal stuff, people kick, kick over stuff, people scream at you, people. You get everything. It's never boring on the streets. Good challenge. Self-motivate you over and over again, even though no one's listening, you still gotta try to give it all. And then as soon as you're kinda in your little zone and you don't think about money or people, then it eventually you draw the crowd somehow. And then you just enjoy it. So it doesn't matter if there's ten or hundred people, you still kinda try to deliver the same thing. We just wanna travel around the world and play for as many people as we can, so just reach more and more people and that's it, I guess. Head down to Burke Street to experience the culture it brings. I just like changing people's days as well. Just putting some piano on the streets, people really appreciate it. I didn't realise how much people actually appreciate it. I feel like those guys are incredibly famous. I see them in the street oh. all the time, and now I'm Me seeing too. them on TV. Yeah, like the Armistad Brothers actually bought their CD That's a couple of months ago. Actually. Have you listened to it? Yeah, it's good. I think that Welsh pianist oh. is brilliantly talented. I'm gonna keep my eyes out. What a nice now. guy as well. I know. Like I listen to his music whenever I'm in Burke Street, but yeah, he's so articulate. Mm. He lovely really got guy. His really point across. Guy. Yeah. <laughs> Coming but up next. next. Yes. Yeah, we're going to be talking about the Reach Foundation. But we'll see you after the break. Welcome back to Mashup, the show that showcases Melbourne. And right now we're going to be talking about the Reach Foundation. That's right. Mm -hmm. A non-profit organisation that is for youths, disadvantaged youths between 10 to 18. And they provide incredibly important workshops mm -hmm. and forums mm -hmm. and camps for them to become socially engaged and whatnot. Confidence building exercises. Finding out a little bit more about that a little later. But Ariel, what did you use or what did you become involved with when you were younger? Um, I was actually involved with uh, out of school drama projects okay. and I felt At like that was really helpful. At what age did you become helpful. involved with that? Um, from 14. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and that was really helpful for me to engage with other kids and have, share a passion. I think as well to do something that is away from your school. Yeah, definitely. Away from your school life, away did from you your studies. Did you have an opportunity? Well, I actually did the same. I did ah. sort of, you know, performing arts when I was yeah. a teenager as well. And I think it's great to be connected to other young people mm -hmm. in ways that are, you know, creative or... Definitely. You know, just another way to connect with people. And I think as well, it was a really nice change from being surrounded by my siblings as well. Mm. So it was my thing that exactly. I could have, you know, just a, a point little of bit of distinction. Yeah, point of self difference. identity. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. 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 It was right. really cool. Mm. Well, let's take a look now at the Reach Foundation. Sometimes people think that Reach is just for young people that are really troubled or at risk or, you know, don't know what they're doing or they're like the bad kids or whatever or the troubled teenagers but um, reach is actually for any young person so it doesn't matter where you come from what your upbringing's been like what you want to do with your life um, it actually doesn't matter like everyone's experiences are relative so anyone is welcome in a reach space When we're growing up as teenagers, we have a lot of older people telling us you know, not necessarily what to do, but giving us a lot of direction in terms of where to go in our lives. And Reach is, you know, our crew is completely youth run. So everyone, everyone would be kind of under the age of 27. So we've kind of got this really unique point in difference where we have highly skilled young people being trained to facilitate. We've got 
different like programs that we run that target different uh, age groups. So we run a rookies program which is for 10 to 12 year olds. So that's in school, um, primary school workshops. And then we run workshops for all high school year levels. And then we've got community programs which is from 13 to 17. I met Reach in 2010. Uh, I was working with another organisation called the Oak Tree Foundation. We were partnered uh, on a project called the Make Poverty History Road Trip. Uh, so I, I was working for Oak Tree at that point and, and Reach came and sucked, sort of ran, ran stuff alongside uh, what Oak Tree was doing. It came in through a workshop called Bird Cage and I guess at like 14, 15, I was pretty reserved, pretty anxious and just a bit not really sure of what the world had to offer me. I, was, I felt quite lost in it. Um, I think that's probably a pretty like standard teenage thing. Community programs is probably the best place to start. So that would be Fuse, which is a five week program and they're run in four different locations in Melbourne. And there's also Sydney office as well and the workshops that they run. Um, and the best thing to do is to jump onto the website and you just go to the program section and look at all the different programs that we run and find what you'd like. We also run Weekends Away, um, which is Friday to Sunday. It's kind of like a Fuse experience, but just in a shorter period of time, which is fun. I always think it's so great to profile organisations that do such incredibly important work that Absolutely. we don't always think about or don't always see. No, it's hard work being a teenager and it's nice oh, to know that you can... It's the worst. Yeah. <laughs> who wants to be young? This youth, youth no. of society, who would want to be young again? No, thank no, you. No, thank you I really all. would not like to be a teenager again. That oh, was not awful. my best moment. <laughs> but I think for any teenagers who happen to be watching this, it's always, you yeah. know, think about the Reach Foundation. Absolutely. And other, other organisations out there that are available for Definitely. you. Definitely. There's so many options that you mm. can go to. But even now, I think it's, you know, even as an adult, it's great to be involved with mm -hmm. other organisations. For instance, yeah. I was telling you before, I do Taekwondo. Yeah. And do really um, regular classes. They have some amazing philosophies as well. Yeah, it's, yeah, but I think it's always good, irrespective of what you're doing, that you're engaged with something. Most that is definitely. away from your work life and away from your study, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just something that connects you with a, a more diverse group of people. Yeah, I can... I can definitely relate to that. Yeah, yeah everything that he said. <laughs> but <laughs> next we'll be talking about karaoke busking. But before that... I have that, no idea what this is, so I'm very curious to find out more. <laughs> before that, though, we're going to head off to a break. Welcome back to Mash Up, the show that showcases Melbourne. Now, our next story is about a curious thing called mm -hmm. karaoke busking, which I'm very curious indeed to know more about. I'm excited, not Would even curious. Would you do something like this if you were, say, walking down the street and you were given the chance to busk? Someone handed you a microphone and said, I would Sing be whatever song you all like. over that. I would be all over that. That just sounds right up my alley. Yes. Yes. What and then you can just walk away. In? Drop mic, walk away. Mic drop out. <laughs> yeah, mic drop out. Definitely. It's the best way to bust because you don't have to commit to singing for like six hours. Nobody knows who you are. You don't have to introduce yourself. You know, you can just make a fool they of yourself. They might recognise you from television though, Ariel. Well, or this possibly is a from probability. the stage. Yeah, it's not probably, probably. No, well, you said what song would you sing? What song would you sing? Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen. It is my go-to karaoke song do. always. Do you know all always. the lyrics? Um, I do, but I couldn't nice. sing them now. Like the okay, teleprompter when okay. I'm singing karaoke <laughs> always does help. That's okay. Well, mine is Fat Bottom Girls by Queen. Oh, really? Yeah. You make Maybe. the rock and world go around. Not bad. Yeah. Maybe you and I can go out to karaoke I think so. I think busking so. and we whip out some Queen. We could go dressed as Yeah, definitely. Well, Mercury perhaps and Co. we'll meet you there. I don't know. Well, we should check out um, the karaoke busking and we'll see. I came up with the idea the morning after I'd seen this busker guy who was really great and he had this big catalogue of songs that he knew by heart and he could play all of them and it was fantastic. Well, That's well, really artistic. My mum's an artistic person. Does she do paintings or drawings? Or she like... does portraits, she does seascapes, landscapes, animals, watercolors, pastels, oils, all the works. And what do you do? 
I do shit like this. <laughs> like conceptual art or yeah. installations. Like magical stuff. Yeah. Like that white like, dude just spoke, so I gave him a smoke. <laughs> so I thought, you know, there needs to be some kind of late night activity where everyone can cramp each other's style and be stupid and sing along to really crappy 80s songs. I like that you can kind of be silly and that you don't have to worry about what people think and it's just like a way of expressing yourself and it, it's just so much fun. And I love how everyone becomes friends and links arms and I don't know, the camaraderie is beautiful. Yeah, yeah. I've been here for uh, two times to see this beautiful girl. And I like this one. So I feel like I'm creating some kind of wild, like, late night service to all the people who are out in the city and they don't know what to do with themselves and they don't really know where they are or how to get home. And I feel like I can keep them company until they get their shit together. Stop right now. Thank you very much. I need somebody with a human touch. Study reactions of people. For example, yeah. fixing people with autism and see what they do. I think it's a good way of uh, expressing your emotions in the, in the form of music. No, I don't take myself seriously. It's a silly thing and it can be really embarrassing when people think that I'm trying to be a big diva and be a great singer because it's not about that. It's about everyone being silly and having a good time. In winter it's awful because everyone's cold and so they just want to get from the club to the taxi as fast as they can. But otherwise, like when it's warm, I think the reason the numbers of people change and the amount of money changes is because it's all about making contact early on like if you bump into one group of people and they stay with you for ages then other people accumulate and they're like oh look there's some people having a good time i'm gonna go over there sometimes all of the people can get really overwhelming especially when people start swearing at their friends across the street what are your names Thank you, Tom. What's your name? Sex man. Thank you, Elizabeth. Basically, you just need to be, I don't know, a strict teacher and say, no, we're not allowed to do that. We don't do this. We don't shout in the microphone. We don't swear. I would say no nudity, but that has been enjoyable in the past. <laughs> His name was Sexy King. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that is true. <laughs> What do you got? Got no small hair, but I got the same. Amplified busking is appropriate. Thank you for coming. I'll see you next weekend. I just love seeing everyone's wild side that you never get to see in the daytime in the city. Everyone's in their suits and their stilettos running around like going to dates and meetings and I love seeing the wild superstar within. <laughs> Thank you.
Can I say, Ariel, that yes. episode five of season three of Mashup should be referred to as the busking episode? The busking episode. Because oh, we've looked at so much busking today. We really have. Uh, we really have. I'm just disappointed that I haven't been able to see you busk. Oh, maybe maybe after the show. Maybe, <laughs> maybe you and I can go out to karaoke busking one night without any Do a little Bohemian us. Rhapsody. Yeah. A little bit of Queen, maybe <laughs> something else. We'll see. But what I don't like about busking, or yes. no, not busking, karaoke mm. if I'm going to be honest, is that I have a large group of musical theatre friends or performer friends who can sing. All can of I them can say sing. very competitive performers as well, no doubt. Oh, yeah. For karaoke, they've Absolutely. rehearsed the Abs song for two oh. and a half weeks. The <laughs> standard all, is set oh high. Oh, my God, it's so high. And they're all amazing. And then they get you up there and you've, you're terrified of, of it being horrible. Yes. And then you start singing. And, See, what you need oh to do, gosh. Ariel, what you need to do, Ariel, to avoid being traumatised by such an experience is rehearse as often as they do. But I don't have that natural singing ability. It's uh, with time. Maybe after we visit time. karaoke busking a couple of times, you'll be there. You'll be yes. there. Yes, karaoke busking for the win. Yes, but we've had a great episode today. We've looked at so yeah, many talented yeah. people, whether they be buskers or whether they be so street many creators. artists. Yeah, exactly. So many. Yeah. yeah, the street art was amazing. God, that was probably my favourite. Oh, but also, you know, the Reach Foundation, which is a great project to be a Inspiring part of. Inspiring is the word we're describing Inspiring. this episode. Inspiring. Yeah. Mm. Good one. Yeah. But, you know, um, you can catch us on YouTube, Facebook. Instagram and Twitter. Mm -hmm, Sadly, mm -hmm. that is all we have time for today. But don't forget, you can find us at the same place at the same time next week. To take us out tonight, mm -hmm. we're going to be hearing from Taito with her track, Get Your Rage On, people. <laughs> Get your rage on, people. <laughs> Catch you next week.